Horace, we've talked about Mohammed's appearance. We've actually never roasted his appearance. Have you ever done that? There was one secondary source which said anyone who says that Muhammad was black, kill him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> not I, that one. Exactly. I, I know there's some hadiths that actually say the whiteness of his tummy was visible. So there is an emphasis on how white he was. Now, some people say, and we know why that is, because a lot of people think being black is not good. It's one thing to say, oh, it's okay to be black, but don't call me black. I don't want to sound black. I don't want to look black. It might be uncomfortable to hear for a lot of people, but I'm telling you, in the Middle Eastern culture, and especially in our Indian Pakistan subcontinent culture as well, they can be tolerant. I have no problem with blacks, but I don't want to be called black. That's the mentality behind the emphasis on Muhammad being white. But also in the Arabian Peninsula, like especially in the Islamic world at the time, it wasn't even okay to be black per se. They had a word for them called Ab, which is still kind of used in parts of the Middle East. It actually was synonymous with like slaves as well at the time, obviously, because like for the large part, they were trading from, they would engage in the slave trade. So basically the other day, somebody told me just casually, have you checked what Wikipedia says about Muhammad's appearance? And I was even shocked that they had a tab describing his appearance because what could you rely on right because islamically no depictions of him are allowed even though we know during like the ottoman era and even Ooh. during the mughal era they had islamic art which included you know pictures of muhammad so to speak the closest sitting on a have. flying donkey as well well a bra, yeah exactly the mirage incident and all of that and also the fact that islam so explicitly prohibits any depiction of any kind so even something like from our childhood potentially uh, like the message that film that was my Islamic propaganda, if you will, from my dad, the fact that Muhammad was not shown in that, he could not be depicted. The movie goes all silent at the beginning and it says, out of respect for him, it is against Islamic theology to depict him. I mean, they made it in your head as a Muslim child at that point. It's even more solidified when they attribute these words to him. Like, even when I saw him in a dream, he was just pure light in Arabic, like the nur. And I'm like, why you can't I see, see a face? face? No, <laughs> I just saw a, a walking stick and like light emanating and like the white, like, like Gundur. It was like this massive uh, light source behind him and you're blinded by it and you just see this silhouette, kind of like Gandalf the White. There's a scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, when he goes, Aragon, show yourself. He goes, Gandalf the Grey? He goes, no. I'm Gandalf the White. And then he takes <laughs> off his cloak and he's like all dressed in white. <laughs> That's the kind of image of Muhammad they've created in our heads. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, basically what you're saying is very true. That kind of loose tradition of not being able to call Muhammad black. And that's like the, the work kind of thing you could call him. So yeah, should we have a look at what this says? It's so interesting. I just want to get your like, just impromptu thoughts on it. Just look out for the contradictions and look out for how they're trying to play both sides. Then it goes from like a gentle kind of glorification of him to like insane, like he oozes divinity. I'd faint right. when I look at him kind of thing. This is a, just under the appearance section on Wikipedia. Anyone can go check it out, which is reading verbatim. So you ready? In Bukhari, chapter 61, Hadith 57 and Hadith 60, Muhammad is depicted by two of his companions thus. God's messenger was neither very tall nor short, Ooh. neither absolutely white nor deep brown. Ooh. His hair was neither curly nor lank. God sent him as a messenger when he was 40 years old. When God but took him unto him, there was scarcely 20 white hairs in his head and his beard. That's narrated 20. by Abbas. And us, so. there there. Imagine, imagine, he must have gone really creeped out. Like people are just looking. Let me count how many strands of hair he's got. One, two. <laughs> and how would be like, sorry, Prophet, we, we love you so much. We're so obsessed with you. We need to write down every detail. How does he eat? How many fingers he used to scratch his head? And when he's sitting, which part of his foot and then at what angle? Muslims just got obsessed with this and they started recording this unnecessary detail, which wasn't really a part of it. And as it went further down, the generations, they got more obsessed with it. And now they're like, oh, this is a part of our religious practice that we need to sit like him. Yeah, but it also just seems so ludicrous as well, right? To have a detail like exactly what you were saying. Like, how, who's counting the amount of white hairs like at the end of a long step? But also, 
Oh, there's one, there's one beneath that one too. Sorry, missed that one. <laughs> and it kind of also doesn't check out because like when he did die, they genuinely left his body alone for like three days. They really expected that he would have the same resurrection story as Jesus. They were expecting that. This is what this prophet is going to go through. And they let his body just rot there essentially for three days. But he really had these people fooled though. You know, if all these stories are true, then yeah, they were like, yeah, maybe there's going to be a resurrection. And they must have been so underwhelmed when nothing happened. And the corpse was just decomposing like any mortal corpse would. The prophet was of moderate height, having broad shoulders, long hair. By the way, this is what weirded me out. Long hair reaching his earlobes. So Muhammad's <laughs> hair was like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Actually yeah. more of like a... Not Johnny Depp level. I did not think he'd have long hair. No, no, I haven't you seen not. all the Taliban having hair up to here? Yeah, but I thought that was only that particular, like, Dioban sect or that. No, no, A lot no. of them don't. I, they focus more on the beard. So, yeah, that was weird for me. These guys were not going every three weeks to their local barber, you know? True, <laughs> but you have, like, a sword right there. You just go... Simply yeah, see. but Prophet <laughs> Muhammad, he, he was a fashionable dude, you know? Like, he wanted to keep his hair... in. He wanted to do the opposite of what the Jews were doing. Let's just put it that way. Exactly. <laughs> there's a hadith. Those of you like, there's a hadith that says, Muhammad uh, said, do the opposite of whatever they do. Yeah. They <laughs> sit, we stand. They dye their hair. We don't. They don't. Yeah. We do. <laughs> whatever. And then they throw it in our faces when we say the fact that people are marrying children around the world is because they are copying the exact sunnah, an example of the prophet. The same way they're emulating his whatever. At least people don't go around with hair to their ear earlobes. So that is, that's a trend that did not carry on in Islam. So once I saw him in a red cloak and I had never seen anyone more handsome than him. Yeah. I know I have to be sensible. Muslims going to take this very personally. Okay. Let's do this okay. with the utmost respect. Right. No, I'm including that. <laughs> I'm including that. I mean, come on. This no, is a compliment. Sure. They themselves are compliment. It's a compliment. You're right. They themselves are complimenting them, but they don't want us to say, wow, you know, like, he was, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're he was the most handsome man on earth. Yeah. Forget about your Brad Pitt's and Bradley Cooper's and Will Smith's and the Rithik Roshan's of the world. and Idris Elba's, nah, it's all about. Yeah, for, for, forget about all of them. Prophet Muhammad, right up there. Even oh, yeah. higher than Prophet Yunus, okay? That's Oh, now, oh, 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 no, that's a debatable, I think. That's yeah, because that's right. in the Quran, yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. The fact that the Quran says that and mm -hmm. actually gives that off as a virtue, even he didn't mm -hmm. succumb to temptation. Not in a jealous way, maybe because they live at the he, same he, lifetime. No, he played along with it. He couldn't say, hey, God, include, you know, include my beauty as well. Come on, God, come on. <laughs> so he's talking you to know? his alter ego. So this is a dilemma for Muslims. That the Quran is giving evidence in support of Jonah's beauty, handsomeness. And then on the other hand, they have this thing that they have to suck up to Prophet Muhammad from his looks to his behavior to his, how he treated kids, how he treated slaves. They just have to say that he was perfect in all aspects. So if they say Prophet was the most handsome man who ever lived, then ooh, you're contradicting the Quran. Right, But they don't. Most Muslims I've come across do accept the fact that Prophet Yunus Jonah or Jonah was the top dog in terms of looks. Like he really was. <laughs> God sorry for the lack of better term. It's just a saying, okay? Please don't kill Nuria. Don't, don't cut off Nuria's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, guy. sorry. It's just, it's just slang. <laughs> He's a top G. Top He's dog. Top G, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment, isn't it, peeps? They might say that. But when it comes to handsomeness, Prophet Jonah was... The best, the, the top two, but they wouldn't put this to words. So that means Prophet Muhammad was not as handsome or was not as good looking as Prophet Jonah. No, because that would be, that would turn into blasphemy. I'm telling you, they cannot say that. I think so. But I think Prophet Muhammad for them trumps Jonah in other ways, obviously, because his character was bigger. He was Allah's most favorite prophet. The seal of the prophets. Yeah, there's no one after him. He was delivering the final, final message. So, yeah. And he had a way more important part to play, if you think about it, in terms of the theology. Of so course. Even the stations of Jannah, where you will end up, Muhammad was, had the highest rank after Allah, whereas the other prophets are kind of chilling. And even when he went on in the mirage and he saw, he met like Abraham and Moses Adam, and Jesus, they, he met Moses. them all on different levels, right? Like Super Mario. 
but the top one was reserved <laughs> for him. <laughs> that villain was the last one, <laughs> the yeah. last level of the game. Yeah, anyways. Okay. Well, um, but yeah, right. Muhammad was middle sized, yeah. did not have lank or crisp hair, was oh. not fat, had a white <laughs> circular face. Oh, circular face. That's supposed to be a description of a pretty face. Circular face. I mean, you can make your mind up once you've heard it all, because, yeah, it, I mean, you tell me if you would. I mean, you want a longer face with a, with a bit of a jawline, yeah? I mean, everyone's beautiful in their own way, so. <laughs> Is that your little model pose? <laughs> wide black eyes. Like, kind of like the Huris he wants in heaven, yeah? Wide black eyes. Wide eyes generally mean this. <laughs> like big eyes, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and long eyelashes. Eyelashes, like those extensions, you know, like all these women, they, they spend so <laughs> yeah. much money. Getting... <laughs> no, but he had it all natural, okay? He had that he was, he was naturally gifted. He could like just do that and get whatever he wanted from you. They're doing their best to portray him as a good looking man. Yeah. But look at this again. It goes downhill very fast because uh, quite literally, because <laughs> look, when he walked, he walked as though he went down a declivity. So that's like almost in a way that like, you know, when you're walking, like yeah. look at my short blades right now, he would be slightly hunched. Yeah. Or like kind of as if he's leaning down. Mm. So, I mean, take people like Hitler. You want to be as, you know, stand on the pedestal, be as commanding, be as, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then look, they, they'll make a big comeback for his presence, mate. Don't worry about it. But check this. He had a mole on his back, which he said, that's the, the sign the to show you that I am. The finality and the seal of the prophet. I didn't know that. No, I didn't what? know. What really? Yeah, it's in the hadith and everything. And ah, look at, right, oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god, no! This was a huge this thing. Is, like he was really. This is. I think he was very. Yeah, exactly. You could make that claim. This is it. I'm the Dajjal. <laughs> yes, you, are. you can pick up a vague reference from any old scripture and say, "See, I was foretold." He would have a mark also, under his I eye. Just, I also think he was turning one of his insecurities into one of his biggest strengths. Like, yeah. how do you turn something like that into that's actually what makes me better than all of you? I have this yeah. direct command with, with God. Quickly, like the biblical yeah. command, like, oh, they have emissions like horses and the length of the penises are like donuts. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. That, whoever came out with that verse had a small dick. <laughs> so that Aaron that. That is he was small like, dick energy. He's insecure. He's like, you know what? Because these guys are animals. That's why they're big dicks. <laughs> and, and all the women are like, oh, but we like so. <laughs> Maybe that's how hung like a horse came into the vernacular. I'm going to have to look yeah. that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it was the Bible all along. Okay, yeah. you, you're going to learn more about that mole, okay? In a bit. So yeah, he was bulky, which again, it's not really flattering, right? To call someone bulky. His face shone like the moon, though. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. He was taller than middling stature, but shorter than conspicuous tallness. So let's just say back in those days, an average height would have been five foot six and really tall would have been six foot, really tall. So yeah, he was five, eight, five, nine, somewhere around that. Yeah, well, basically they're trying to say he was the perfect thing. He was neither too tall nor too short. He was the perfect medium. And then look how it's clearly contradicting again. He had thick curly hair. Just above, we read that his hair was neither curly nor whatever word they use for straight. Now he's got thick curly hair as well. The plates of his hair were parted. So he had like kind of that kind of hair coming down to here. I'm really starting to build up a, a picture of him now, like more so than I ever did when I was a Muslim. There's just too much here. He's, there's, he, there's, there's no redeeming quality. The thick curly hair is the only redeeming feature so far. Ooh, That's kind like of this? drawn me back. Kind of like this? How is that curly? Oh, no, not curly, but thick. The thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pass on that front. So his hair, hair reached the, uh, beyond the lobe of his ear. His com this is how it gets very nice again. Look, his complexion was azhar, bright, luminous. luminous. Muhammad had a wide forehead. Oh, kind of like you, Horace. Kind of like me as well. <laughs> we, we've got, we share a similar quality to Muhammad. Oh, no. Maybe he was balding from there. No, I don't know. A wide forehead. Yeah, I've heard that one. Kushada Pishani. That, oh, that's look, been, yeah. look what happened to him when he got angry. 
So he had a wide forehead and a fine long arched and fine long arched eyebrows, which did not meet. So he definitely did not have a unibrow, guys. Monobrow, yeah, he you. did have it. Monobrow. Oh, he did not have a monobrow. Their fashion standards are pretty similar to ours because they know which qualities not to attribute to him. Yeah, but you know, it gets a bit shady with the amount that they say he was not this and he was not that makes you beg the question, was he all of those things that you have to keep saying he definitely was not that? You'll see it. You'll see it as it goes on. <laughs> so he had a wide forehead. Okay, his eyebrows did not meet. Between his eyebrows, there was a vein which Ooh. distended when he was angry. So you know when people get angry and you can see their vein here, that was clearly going on. Protruding, yeah. Not. Yeah, I, I I usually get that some I think somewhere around there, but n not entirely in the middle, but slightly on the side. Yeah, yeah. Is that your inner Muslim coming out? You're trying to compare yourself to? No, you mean like this one? Have a look. See the vein bulging? <laughs> oh my gosh! I can't even look at that. That's a lot. <laughs> He, he, oh he's God. actually got, oh. I, I really can't look at veins. I always feel like they're gonna burst. Like I can't. No, no, that is it's up there. Veins. Oh my gosh. Yeah, anyway, so that so this is, is that, that that's Prophet Muhammad for you. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm glad I've never seen you angry then. That's 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 a lot. I don't, I don't, I don't get that either. Anyway, Muhammad used to get that. Yeah? So when he was ordering those people to be put to death and their killings and all of that, that his vein must have been protruding all of them times. The upper part of his nose was hooked. Ooh, that ain't a good looking nose. He was thick bearded had smooth cheeks, a strong mouth, and his so teeth were set mouth? apart. Ah, uh, there's a gap. That looks, I don't, I don't think that's flattering. Yeah? Gap in the teeth. I don't, I, I, I don't like it. How's he looking that's... to you, Horace? You know what? Is it done? No, no, there's more. Uh. So he had thin hair on his chest. Ooh. His neck was man. like the neck of a... Of an ivory, ivory statue, statue with the purity of silver. My, my, my. There's no exaggeration. Absolutely. Just corrupt someone like this. Maybe he had a big crush on him. <laughs> Honestly, but he definitely had a trip to the orthodontist as well. Uh, His, okay, Muhammad was a proportionate, stout, firm gripped, even of belly and chest, broad chested and broad shouldered. Okay, Gorgeous. hold on. You ready? Is that, why, is, it, is that why he was pretending to be dead under those dead bodies at the Battle of Uhud? <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> That's true. It's in their own book. Oh my God. It's in the okay, remember heart. that mall that we talked about? Yeah. The seal of the prophecy. So that this is how it's described. Again, I don't think it's very flattering. The seal of prophecy between Muhammad's shoulders is generally described as having been a type of raised mole the size of a pigeon's egg. Another description of Muhammad was provided by Um Ma'abad, a woman he met on his journey to Medina. Oh, check this. I saw a man, pure Ooh. and clean, with Ooh. a handsome face and a fine Ooh. figure. Ooh. He was not marred by a skinny body, nor was he overly small in the head and neck. Oh. He was graceful and elegant, Horace, with intensely black eyes Ooh. and thick eyelashes. There was a huskiness in his voice, yeah. and his neck was long. His beard was thick, and his eyebrows were finely arched and joined together. She said he has a monobrow. The monobrow. Other he didn't have a monobrow. Which nah, one is see? it? Which, there you go. There you Does go. Does he have curly hair or does he not? <laughs> is he tall or is he short? Oh, is it the size of a pigeon egg or small? Or is it tiny and you can forget about it? Anyway. When silent, silent, he was grave and dignified. And when he spoke, glory Oops. rose up and overcame him. <laughs> this is too much. Is this <laughs> also why that tree was crying for him at the final sermon? Why his camel cried? Why didn't he use my shade this time? <laughs> yeah. Quite please. And then, and, Jealous as a tree. And then, and then, and then Prophet Muhammad did go to him the next day, didn't he? Like when he found out that oh, the tree I don't was know, crying. He hugged him. He was the first tree hugger or something. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Islam invented tree hugging. It's the revolution. Muslims yeah. do brag about that. They say that all oh, Prophet Muhammad said, do not cut a tree of your enemy, you know, like don't yeah, even cut a tree. Yeah, but he was also like the crappiest at giving like harvest advice, wasn't he? He knew nothing yeah, about yeah. agriculture yeah. and planting exactly. and farming. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And no, but even with the tree, like he said, don't cut a tree when he conquered Medina. 
a maka, sorry. Yeah. He, he said, don't cut a tree. And then one guy said that, oh, dear prophet, we use this kind of tree. We cut it up and then we use it as decoration. The so prophet was like, Okay, you can cut off that one. <laughs> he used okay. To, he used to make stuff up as he went along. Honestly, of course. When you're playing a game like that, you've got to, and when you've told so many lies, you've got to account for like allowing people to have certain loopholes. Otherwise, it's too much for you to micromanage by yourself. Yeah. Anyway, let's finish this off. I'm done. Basically, she's going on and on, right? But we, he, he has one brows at this stage. He was the most beautiful of men and the most glorious. And close up, he was the sweetest and the loveliest. Such lame adjectives as well. They're such like This is how somebody in year four would write. And then you'd send their homework back and say, can you switch these to better adjectives? (laughs) Anyway, he was sweet of speech and articulate, but not petty or trifling. Oh, right. His speech was a string of cascading pearls. Oh, la di da, wow. Measured so that none despaired of its length and no eye challenged him because of brevity. What brevity? Have you heard the Quran? And I'm saying that because I think Muhammad wrote the Quran. In company, he is like a branch between two other branches, but he is the most flourishing of the three in appearance and the loveliest in power. He has friends surrounding him who listen to his words. If he commands, they obey implicitly with eagerness and haste, without frown or complaint. But yeah, that's what he looks like, Horace, according to what you want. Let's have a look. So let's just put it to AI and see how does Mid Journey interpret that. See? See, that was just gonna say, well, the AI is just generating what usually a middle aged <laughs> Arab man looks like, mate. No, but that's based on Islamic sources. Yeah, that's based on Islamic sources. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Have we just okay. done the unspeakable? We've we brought Muhammad to life with we've AI, to yeah, by, by their own sources. By their own sources. This wow. is this is Tirmidhi's version, yeah? This is yeah. according to Tirmidhi's version. Oh, yeah, this There's is no Tirmidhi's eyewitness yeah. account. <laughs> oh, here we go. Forget about Charlie Hebdo. Forget about that. Now, go and, you know, like, this is blasphemy by Tirmidhi. This is blasphemy yeah. by that woman. This well, is, you know what? They, what they would us. argue that we're the, we're the culprits for blasphemy because we're the one that brought that image into life. So where Allah says you should not... You should not bring anything to life because only God can create. Even Dhirmidhi is only just describing him in words. Mm. We're the ones who brought well, life into know? that. But did he not know that one day we'll have AI and we'll be able to imagine that? If you're uh, no, they but hang on. If you're able to re- expect us to refrain from doing that to this guy. But if you can imagine it in your head, that's the whole purpose of describing him, yeah? You're imagining yeah. this description. So if you're imagining it, you know, you, you are getting this vision in your in your mind, that what he would have looked like, right? But then, why can't you draw that? Which is actually a great point, and it kind of lends itself to what we were talking about earlier, because when I was a Muslim, I wasn't privy to really any descriptions of Muhammad. It was almost like so mysterious, and like he's just so, I'm telling you, they just interchange it with like nur and, and like light and divinity, that it's like unspeakable. That's why even when my imagination was trying to concoct seeing him in a dream, I could put no face to him because I had no reference point. And Islam or like my teachings or my upbringing of Islam had in a way deliberately kept that away from me. All you're told, because Horace, you can't get away with being told that some guy's sweat smells like roses. And I was told silly things like. Poop disappears yeah. as soon as it comes out of his backside. Do you wonder why does it come out in the first place? <laughs> yeah, why not? Exactly. Why, why not just like... not poop like Kim Jong Un? You know, Kim Jong Un doesn't poop. Say, yeah. <laughs> well, how come? How come the leader of North Korea can like not... <laughs> bypass that, but Prophet Muhammad can't? No, it's weird. But yeah, someone who you know every step of his is like I know Christians and they have that trinitarian belief in, in Islam. It's completely shirk to do that, but. It is almost like God himself was walking the, the earth when Muhammad was around. And like little, even things about him being in his, I don't know where this comes from, and this is not backed up by any sources, but I was told this over and over again. And it kind of goes back to the cradle thing with Jesus. But every time Muhammad would rock in a cradle, he, the moon would change to the side that he, his cradle was rocking. So from mm. a child, you're told that to all of this, to no descriptions of this guy. 
That's what I'm saying. This is today is the closest I've ever got to seeing Muhammad in my life. Prophet yeah. Muhammad. If you like my video and would like to support my channel, then you can be my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash xmuslim or you can simply buy me a coffee.